to everybody who shared tonight. Um, I think one of the most humanizing things that we can do is to share songs and stories. So thanks, Sal, for bringing us all together. And um, thank you, Next Door, for hosting, um, hosting us this evening. Um, also, thank you for the prompt of family secrets, which at first I was going to reject outright and just do whatever I wanted. <laughs> um, but after kind of letting it sink in and uh, kind of reflecting on what family secrets can mean uh, interpretively and maybe more obscurely at certain points, um, I came up with some really uh, kind of aha moments and uh, interesting associations that I'm going to share with you right now. <laughs> um, I feel like the, I feel like um, a sort of universal family secret is, um, and maybe all, all of our first family secrets, um, and if you have young ones in your, in your family, or my sister has three kids, and there's a pretty big family secret there, especially now that one of them is almost a teenager, but Santa Claus is a pretty big family secret. Um, and, you know, the idea of a secret is something, that secret is kind of this, you know, preservation of innocence in a certain way, and when you lose that, it's kind of this threshold to, uh, by degrees, you just increasingly lose your innocence. <laughs> but um, as sort of an ode to that, um, I set a Christmas poem that I absolutely love and I feel like is sort of underutilized um, during the season. And um, I set it to a melody, and that's going to be where we start. Right. Twas the night before Christmas when all through the house not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care in hopes that Saint Nicholas soon would be there. The children were nestled all snug in their beds while the visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. And mama in her kerchief, I in my cap, had just settled down for a long winter's nap. Lule, lulai, lule, lulai. When out on the lawn there arose such a clatter, I sprang from the bed just to see what's the matter. Away to the window I flew like a flash, tore open the shutters and threw up the sash. He spoke not a word but went straight to his work and filled all the stockings, then turned with a jerk, and laying his finger aside of his nose, and giving a nod up the chimney, he rose. Lule, lulai, lule, lulai. He sprang to his sleigh, to his team gave a whistle, and away they all flew like the down of a thistle. But I heard him exclaim ere he rode out of sight, Merry Christmas to all, and to all a good night. Thank you all for bearing with me with what I truly hope will be your last Christmas song of this holiday season. <laughs>
Um, something that I sort of already had in my pocket um, is really, which is what I first thought of as far as family secrets goes, um, is uh, um, a song that I wrote that really is about um, uh, setting a mythological story of Demeter and Persephone to, um, to music, and it's the idea of the, the, the secret being a place where you transform or a, a place that has great potential for transformation in something, a secret as something that only the initiated know or experience or can value. Um, all of that idea of secret really brought me to this piece of, um, to this song, which um, has no title. Um, but really speaks to the transformative power of darkness and the longing in humanity all over the world throughout history to create stories to understand the secrets of nature and the secrets of the universe. The winter solstice approaches and the darkness looms Surrounding like the death crone's pall Striking at the flowers in our hearts The snow falls steady, bleak and certain Mounting at the door As the wind blows sweeping summer Sweet melody away as I implore Demeter, Demeter Your sorrow and agony oh, Where is Persephone? Demeter, Demeter Your sobs in this silence I deplore I feed the fire, ashen birch wood conjuring its lore And the flames go dancing, casting shadows And an ancient nits begins to soar The hair upon my neck is rising, something becomes sure And a spark leaps alive from the fire's flickering cone Takes shape before me and rises from the floor. Demeter, Demeter, the night time encompassing, oh, where is the hope of spring? Demeter, Demeter, your wisdom I here do draw forth. The goddess bearing down upon me spreads her arms and roars. You foolish mortal, how dare you disturb me from my yearly chore. A flash of light from Hecate's portal I could not endure. And as revelation dawned within me, my mortal sorrow escapes me once more. Demeter, Demeter, I grieve for the failing sun my roots frozen have become. Demeter, Demeter, grant me grace through winter's transformation. to introduce you to my band. <laughs> um, I have um, most of the songs I'm singing tonight obviously are a cappella. Um, this particular song is a lute song composed by John Dowland. Um, and I'm going to try and talk as I set this up. Do a mic it to one of the other mics? I don't I think we need that, and I'm probably going to do this one without a mic myself. Okay. Um, ooh. <laughs> so 
are dissatisfying, but we're connected, I think. Um, let's see. Oh yeah, that's it. Cool. So I think one of one of the beautiful things about John Dowling was a composer at Elizabeth, Queen Elizabeth's court, and is really a master of the Elizabethan lute song. He one of the things that is most compelling about that era of music is um, the, the, the cathartic power with which they represented sorrowful things, especially in love. And um, one of the things that it sort of revealed to me is the, the transformative power of articulating something so painful, so beautifully, that you kind of come through it, out the other side, and it sort of initiates a healing. Um, this particular song is an example of that. So it's sort of like the secret of sadness is happiness. You just gotta articulate it well enough. Um, and so,
we all feel better now? <laughs> the catharsis will come. <laughs> um, to sort of lighten the mood a little bit. It is winter, but the seed of spring has been planted. Light doth return day to day. Start noticing in February. Um, I have two more songs. They're both relatively short. Um, this next piece is, is, called Se is called Secrecy Song. It's from a uh, Henry Purcell opera called The Fairy Queen. And this kind of draws on what um, it appealed to me because it's the, I it's the idea of a secret as something that holds safe and precious, important information um, and preserves it for those only those who, who would understand or who would value it in a way that, that, that um, gives it honor. Anyways, this <coughs> comes at a part in his, his opera where secrecy comes out and narrates this um, short air. Um, I don't have any Baroque instruments with me or orchestra players, so I'm going to sing it a cappella. But this is secrecy's <coughs> song. I am come to lock all fast, love without me cannot last. I am come to lock all fast, love without me cannot last. Love, like counsels of the wise, must be hid from vulgar eyes. Tis holy. Tis holy, oh, we must, we must conceal it. They profane it, they profane it, who reveal it? They profane it, they profane it, who reveal it? Love, like counsels of the wise, must be hid from vulgar eyes. Tis holy. Tis holy, oh, we must, we must conceal it. They profane it, they profane it, who reveal it. Thank you. Um, and lastly, before we go, um, I um, thank you, everybody, again, for being such a good, attentive audience. It's rare to find a listening room um, that, as, as a performer, it is so energizing and charging and intimidating um, and energetically powerful, and it can kind of overwhelm. But uh, you can also do a lot with it, and um, it, it's uh, very valuable. So thank you for, for being that. Um, I uh, the last song that I'm going to sing is a setting of a poem from the Lord of the Rings, Fellowship of the Ring. For those of you familiar with the story, um, the company comes to both Lorien and spends a great a deal of time there. Galadriel reads them up one side and down the other, um, sort of gets them ready for what they're in for. Um, but as they're leaving, they're getting in the boats, and they're flowing down the river, and Galadriel and Celeborn come out and sing them a song as they float away. Um, and I set it to music, and it seems like a nice farewell. I sang of leaves, of leaves of gold, and leaves of gold there grew. Of wind I sang, a wind there came, and in the branches blew. Beyond the sun, beyond the moon, the foam was on the sea. And by the strand of Ilmoran, there grew a golden tree. 
Beneath the stars of ever even Eldamore it shone. In Eldamore, beside the walls of Elven Tyrion, there long the golden leaves have grown upon the branching years. While here beyond the sundering seas now fall the elven tears. O Lorian, the winter comes, the bare and leafless day. The leaves are falling in the stream, the river flows away. O Lorian, too long have I dwelt upon this hither shore, and in a fading crown have twined the golden Eleanor. But if of ships I now should sing, what ship would come for me? What ship would bear me ever back across so wide a sea? sort of singing and, and thank you to you as Daniel said to, to find a listening room like this a place where an audience 